My name is Cleo Tellier, and I'm the director and writer of Mishka, the short film. And so today I want to answer all of your questions about the film, because you guys send me a lot of questions on Instagram and on YouTube. And so let's dive in. Oh, and before I actually start answering your questions, I just want to say if you haven't seen the movie, go check it out now, link um, in the description below, because I'm going to be revealing everything that went through my mind when I made this film and everything that I intended with this film. And so there's a lot of spoilers. Okay, so someone asked, where did I shoot Mishka? So we shot the movie in Canada in the greater Toronto area. So basically that also responds to my second question, which was why we use Canadian money in the film. Since the film was shot in Canada, we're using the money from here. So, yeah. Um, someone else asked, so third question, someone else asked, why was the pregnancy test so expensive? What is this question, guys? Okay, in Canada, pregnancy tests are basically like $12, $13. So like, whatever, around that price. So the price that I gave was just like the actual price of that pregnancy test. Like, it's the real cost in Canada, so maybe that's expensive for you in your country, but in Canadian money in Canada, that's how it works. So, sorry guys, but that's just how much a pregnancy test costs in Canada. Um, fourth question. Um, someone asked, does the main actress has Instagram? Um, so the main actress, uh, the girl who plays Mishka, her name is Mattia Jacket, and she does have Instagram, so I will... Um, link it below or Instagram is Mattia Grace. How was working with Mattia Jacket and how did you know she was the right person to play Mishka? So working with her, honestly, it was incredible. She was so, she's so talented, this, this girl. Um, honestly, like, I just couldn't even believe it. Like, I would give her directions and she wouldn't, it would seem like she's not even, like, listening. And then she would just go and like shoot the whole thing perfectly, like exactly like I asked her to. And I was just like, what? So yeah, she's really talented. And how did I know that she was the right person to play Mishka? Um, and how did I like basically discover her? Um, well, a casting director um, actually told me about her. Like she read the script and then I was telling her what I was looking for. And then she was like, oh, I know the perfect girl for this role. And then she told me about her and I saw her footage. And right away, I just felt, literally, like, fell in love with, um, like, kind of, like, the way she acts in front of camera and her look. Like, it was exactly what I was looking for. So, yeah, I basically, like, right away, I just knew it was her. As soon as I saw her footage, I was like, this is Mishka. So then I just kind of contacted her and convinced her <laughs> to play the part. Um, someone asked, uh, is this V from Backstage? Um, yeah, so in um, Mishka's best friend in the script, uh, Callie, is portrayed by Devin Nakoda, who also plays V in the show Backstage. So, yep. And someone else asked, how was it working with Devin Nakoda? So, working with Devin was also an incredible experience because she's so talented. And she's, like, insanely quick to learn, like, her text. Like, I honestly, I just couldn't believe it. Because I don't know why this happened, but somehow she didn't get the, one of the scenes with all her texts. Like the scene at the, the party scene where she's talking about her dog and her birthday and blah, blah, blah. Um, basically, she didn't get the text for that scene. She had like nothing. So like five minutes before, not even, I, I, like, I found out that she didn't get that part of the script. So then I give it to her. Um, and then she learned it in like two seconds and she literally like did it perfectly like every time. I was just like, what? Yep. So, oh my God, those kids, so talented. <laughs> what happened to Mishka's mom? Where is she? Okay. Um, so basically it doesn't say in the movie. So my goal was to let you guys imagine whatever you wanted to imagine. If you want to imagine that she's dead or maybe she got divorced and she's just not in her kid's life, whatever you want to imagine. Because this question is kind of, it, like, it's beside the point. Like, it doesn't really matter where she is. The point is, she's not there. 
in my mind though, if you want to know what I was thinking, in my mind she was just like probably dead like a long time ago and Mishka's just living alone with her dad. Someone asked what's the song at the end um, of the film. So the song at the end when she's in the bathroom and then she goes to her dad's bedroom. Um, this song is called Budapest um, and it's from Paul Novotny and Roby Botos. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Anyway, um, I'll link the song below. Um, basically, he kind of redid, it's based on this song, but Paul Novotny, who also did like the sound design and like all that for my film uh, and the music, basically redid, kind of changed a bit his song to make it fit more with my film. But it's just a beautiful song that I fell in love with the first time I heard it. And I feel like it really brings um, the emotion that I wanted to bring in the film. Okay, so basically all the other questions were just about um, what happened to the film. You guys had so many questions about her, her dad, the boy, like everything. So I'm just going to go through the whole film, film explaining like what she's thinking and what I was thinking uh, when I made this film. So if you haven't seen it, it's time to just stop. Like don't watch this next part. So um, basically, um, so the film starts, Mishka is in her bedroom. And then she throws up, um, and after that we find out that basically, we kind of find out really quickly that she's pregnant, um, but we don't know who. And so after that she goes home, um, and then her dad comes, like, in the scene. There's also this, sorry, I missed, there's this whole part in the car where she's with her dad, it's awkward. Anyway, so the question is, throughout the film, um, like, who got her pregnant? Did she get, was she sexually abused by her dad? Or is it that boy that we see at the party that we hear um, earlier, they talk about that boy and stuff. So is it Lucas or is it her dad? So the storyline is actually about, it's not that much about teen pregnancy, that it, it's mostly about incest. So it's about a child who is getting sexually abused by her dad. And so that's the way I intended it. Um, I gave little cues of, of, um, of, of this happening. So at first when she looks at her dad's photo and she's uncomfortable, then in the car with her dad, the way he touches her and the way he looks at her after when she leaves. Um, also like the way he, like the way, just the way it's awkward between them, the way when she's in her bedroom after school and he comes in and you knock and the way he looks at her and she's so scared and uncomfortable and after that she takes a shower, um, that's basically means that she also got sexually abused that day. Um, that's why she went in the shower after because she felt like dirty and disgusted basically. Um, for, for those of you who don't know, like if you haven't studied like, if you haven't studied child abuse, sexual abuse even, um, you might not know this, but people when they're getting sexually, like after they, they've been sexually abused, they often want to take a shower because they just feel gross and dirty. And obviously it's a feeling that you can't get away even by washing, but that's just something that people, that's just the way people feel. So that's why there's this scene with her taking a shower. Um, and then, yeah, and so after that, um, there's the party scene, which is kind of intended to show like, she just wants to be a normal kid. She kind of has feelings for this guy, um, Lucas. She thinks he's cute. The kiss is intended to look like it's a first kiss. Like, that's the first time kissing. Which is why, after that, it's also meant to kind of be, oh, it's not him, the father. Because that was clearly the first time they kissed. Um, and so, yeah, it kind of shows, like, oh, there's maybe hope for her. Because she can actually just kind of be a little bit like a normal kid. Um, you know, who's just like into this cute boy. Um, and then after that, she she's home. Um, and then the morning after, she's talking to her dad. And her, dad, her dad's talking about his pills. So a lot of people ask about those pills. What are those pills? So basically, there's a different types of... There's a few pills that if you take and you're pregnant, this could really harm your baby. Like you will lose the baby. Um, so in Canada, um, like the pharmacist puts like, um, like a little description tag on the bottle and would, that would say like, don't take this drug if you're pregnant. Um, so basically even if it's a guy, 
they will put that, like even if the pills belong to a guy, they will put that on the bottle so that everyone's in the house, everyone who could, who could potentially see those pills would know if you took those pills, like you will harm your baby. So when you see like the close up of the pill, you can kind of see that tag, but I didn't want to show it too much. I wanted people, like I didn't want to, I didn't want it to be too obvious. I wanted people to kind of not be sure um, about like what was going to happen. But that's basically like what's going through mine because she, after having this normal um, evening with a boy her age, she basically knows she doesn't want to have a baby. Um, obviously, it's also like her dad's baby, like she got to be. So obviously, she like she doesn't want to keep, like she doesn't want it. But on top of that, it's like she lived an evening of what it feels like to be a normal kid, and she wants she wants her life to be that way she's not ready to be a parent but the thing is um she can't just have an abortion without talking to her dad at least in canada that's how it works if you're younger than 14 you can't just go and get an abortion so she would have to go with her dad get his signature would have to be there all that um so she can't tell her dad so she doesn't know what to do um she's feeling really scared and lonely and so she steals her dad's pills and then she takes a bunch of them um and basically her goal is to lose the baby. Um, so obviously a lot of people ask, like, why isn't she dead? First of all, she only take like six pills. So often you need to take like a whole bottle or like half a bottle. You don't, like you just become very sick, but you don't, be, you don't die off six of those pills. And then the other thing is, yes, like, obviously she doesn't know that, right? She's just a kid. But the point is her life is so awful, getting sexually abused constantly by her dad that she knows that there's a risk that she could die but she doesn't even care that much she's like you know what like there's might be a risk but if i die like it doesn't even matter like my life is shitty so it's not that she wants to die she's not trying to commit suicide she's trying to like kill the baby but it's really like she knows that there's a, a chance that she could potentially die like a small chance um, but she doesn't even care about her own life because she's so sad and depressed. So then you see her in the bathroom and that's why she's crying so much and she's in pain, right? Because you have to understand, like, she just found out she's pregnant, so her baby isn't, like, big or anything. So it's not because she's in pain from, like, the baby, like, leaving her body. It's because she, she's in pain because it's, like, she, the, um, she's having, like, contraction, basically. That's what those pills do. And she's in pain because it's painful like she took all those pills like I said like she's not gonna die taking six pills but it's really painful so she's in pain um for a few hours for a while I don't know um and that's when like you can see the blood like in the bathroom and stuff it's she's not having her period guys like that's so much blood and stuff like it's like from the baby it's from taking pills um that can be very dangerous if you're taking them while you're pregnant and so so yeah so basically she the baby dies that way and then after that, it's the ending, the ending that you guys have been like asking, like you've been asking so many questions about this ending. And so let's talk first about what happened. So Mishka goes, um, she's really sad. She needs comfort. She has no one to go to, to talk to. She's alone. So she goes back to her dad's bed um, and go goes into bed uh, with them. So first of all, in that scene, she's like, she oh, she doesn't have pants, she's just in underwear, and she's 13. So again, like a 13-year-old wouldn't go in underwear in her bed. That again shows that, you know, she's getting sexually abused. That is definitely not the other boy. Um, and then on top of that, there's the title that comes up, the real title, which is I Killed Her Baby. Mishka was just like a marketing title. The real title of the film is I Killed Her Baby, Our Baby. Um, and this again shows at a hundred percent that it's her and her dad like it's on top of the scene where she's with her and her dad they're sleeping in the bed beside each other like touching each other like you know it's their baby so that should like close up all questions about whether it's the dad or the boy or age but a lot of you like have asked me if she's getting sexually abused by her dad, why is she going into bed with her? And honestly, guys, this is exactly why I made this film. So I'm so happy so many of you, like, were willing to ask this question as opposed to just kind of, like, wonder and keep it to yourself. 
because this is the reason I made this film to bring awareness to this topic and to bring awareness to how people are feeling when they're getting sexually like abused as, as a child. And so like the reason why she goes back like in, in bed with him, like as I told you, she needs comfort, comfort and that's the only comfort that she can get. But what you guys have to understand is she probably got abused since she was like really young. Let's say she got abused since she was born. That's all she knows. Even though she knows it's wrong, she's kind of like used to it and she needs comfort. So she's going back into bed. And if you looked it up, like if you look up sexual abuse, like going back to your abuser for comfort and having a relation, wanting to have a relationship uh, with your abuser, all that is like 100% normal for people who've been constantly sexually abused since birth. So the way she's acting is 100% normal. And this probably seems really fucked up to you. Like, sorry for the word, but you know, it probably seems like, like that doesn't make any sense if you get abused, but you have to understand she's been getting abused, like let's say like a few times per week, like since she was a baby. Yeah, so if you look up Stockholm Syndrome, you kind of see like, that's like when uh, something really traumatic happens to you, like if you get raped or, I don't know, kidnapped or something like that. Like after that, um, they're, like it's like you, you start to feel like a feeling of affection towards the person that did that to you. So that's like a real thing. Like, um, so basically that's what she has. And that's what I wanted to discuss um, in this film. Like, the real topic of this film is not teen pregnancy. And I had a lot of people saying, like, oh, this is not teen pregnancy. Guys, like, the definition of teen pregnancy is if you're a teen and you're pregnant, whether it's consensual, not consensual, whether it's rape, not rape. If you're a teen and you're pregnant, then that's teen pregnancy. Okay, so, but yeah, so the main topic really is incest. It's about sexual abuse. Um, of a, like a dad abusing his daughter. So some people ask, is this based on a true story? So no, it's not based on a true story. No one told me about this story. I made it up. But you need to know that, you guys need to know that so many people actually go through this, so many girls. So it's not based on a person that I know, but so many people are going through this like right now at this moment. So yeah. And, um, is there a part two coming up? Um, no, there's no part two coming up. This is the end for Mishka. However, I am working on another film, which is also, which is going to be also about child abuse, different types of abuse, um, a fiction film, and it's a feature film. And it's also, it's about, um, the foster care system. And it's going to be also about incest again, but between a brother and a sister who are both teenagers. So that's coming up soon. That's my next project. Um, yeah, so to answer the question um, why I chose Mishka to kill her, kill her baby, it was really to show like how, like how desperate she is to get out of this life. Like to talk about abortion, like specifically to talk about unsafe abortion. Like in some countries, it's not even legal. You can't even get abortion. So girls... Um, no matter their age, like they will do things like that to have an abortion, which is really, really unsafe for their own life, obviously for their baby's life, but for their own life. So why did I choose to kill Mishka's baby? And to be honest, like it wasn't like a decision, like I wrote this film because I just felt like writing it. I wasn't like, oh, she needs to keep her baby or she needs to killer baby I'm not trying to encourage people having abortion at all um or safe or unsafe I'm not telling people not to have abortion like this is not my place to make I'm not gonna tell you guys how I feel about abortion because that's like um a very touchy subject and you know like I'm gonna keep my personal opinion for myself but I just wanted to say like the goal of this movie is not meant to encourage girls to have like unsafe abortions at all. I really don't think, I really don't believe in like unsafe abortions. I really don't think that girls should do that. And that's also why I'm showing it. Like a lot of people think, oh, since it's a bad idea, then I shouldn't show it because I'm gonna give people ideas um, because she survived. Like I could see why you would think that, but that wasn't the goal. The goal is to open up the discussion. 
like in the movie like in my opinion it was clear that it was very painful and that she wasn't having a good time and that it's dangerous so i was definitely trying to i wasn't trying to portray this as like a good thing or a good decision to make i don't like i hope i honestly like i wish no girls had had to go through this yeah just so you know like i wasn't sexually abused as a child so like that's not why i made this film but I do know people, a lot of people who were, like close, people close to me who were, were abused as a child and I saw how this affected them and basically how it ended up affecting me because they are so affected by it even now in their adulthood. And so I was really upset about this whole, when I made this film I was upset about like child abuse, like people who do that to children and the consequences that this have on them as adults. And so one of the reasons I made this film is really just for me because my way of expressing myself is true art, it's true filmmaking. And so I needed to get over the anger that I had, you know, towards the people that did that to like friends, like family, etc. you know, people that I know that were abused as a child. And to do that, my way of doing that at the time um, at the time it was to make this movie and it really helped me kind of like get closure in a way even though it didn't happen to me um, so I did it for me basically in a way and so that's one of the reason why it feels like there's no hope at the end because at that time when I wrote the film and when I directed the film I truly felt which I know now for a fact is wrong but at that time in my life, I actually felt like there was no hope for those people. I was looking at the people that I knew who had been abused and I was like, wow, like their life is so like all over the place because of the abuse that they had when they were a child. And now they're super old and they still can't get like over it. Like, is there hope for those people? I honestly felt like there was no hope for them. Like, truly, like that's how I felt. And that's why it shows in the film. That's why it feels like... At the end, she's like helpless, because that's how I felt. I was like, those people often grow up and they're helpless. And don't get me wrong, this is sometimes true. Like a lot of the, those kids who are abused do grow up and end up having difficulties in their adult life. And they don't all become like perfect adults. Like a lot of them end up in drugs or in alcohol or they abuse other people or they end up, you know, those girls can end up with like an abuse, like a, some a husband who like abused them or whatever, right? So they don't or they have like mental illness, like it's not, they don't have the perfect life. And so I was right a bit when I said, you know, when I, I'm showing that, you know, it feels like their life is like helpless. But now looking back at it with my experience with um, everything that happened since then, since then, I realized that those kids are not helpless they can truly get redemption, they can actually forgive um, their abuser and they can move on and they can actually have a better life. They can end up having the life that they want, that they deserve. They don't have to just become the person with mental illness, with struggles, with abuse. They can actually be whoever they want to be and I truly believe that now. Um, but before, um, I simply for, it's really complicated. I'll make another video explaining why, but for a lot of reasons, I simply didn't believe that back then when I wrote that film. When I, I wrote that film when I was like 18. Yeah, 18, I think. Oh, actually, I think I was 19. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah. Um. So I hope this kind of explains more about why I made this film, and I hope this video answered all your questions about Mishka. If you still have questions, like, comment below and I'll make a second video. Like, I don't mind. Um, but yeah, that's honestly, like, I just hope that you guys now understand more about how people think when they're getting sexually abused by a family member. Um, I hope that Tinding makes sense for you now. And I also hope that um, you guys can see, even though my ending was kind of like, made probably made you feel a bit like oh it's you know those kids are like helpless like what can we actually do to help them I still want to say that like there are a lot of things we can do to help those people and if you haven't watched my first film uh, The Silence go watch it I'll link it below because this film does show 
like is about child abuse also um but it's a documentary and it it will give you more insight into child abuse and into how you can help those people which is speaking up for them when they're not able to speak up for themselves and getting them out of those abusive situations and so that's it for today's vlog thank you so much for you know watching mishka like i feel so blessed um to have like that many views you know like right now we're at like 9 million views so thank you so much guys yeah